but it is absolutely tied to, first and foremost, it's a state's responsibility to protect their own people. It is only a situation where that is failing in an large scale where the international community then has an obligation to intervene. And it stresses, though, the respect for sovereignty, for, for individual state sovereignty, the lack of in, in interference in domestic affairs. It would be lovely if, whether it was a tied to R2P or something else, and it may actually be something else, but in the larger concept where we focus on prevention. I, w we heard tonight some great ideas about how do you prevent these awful things from happening in the first place. The challenge that I have from a practical perspective is that it's a very fine line to, inter to, to be involved in another state in the guise of preventing things that in many cases won't be regarded with skepticism as being interference in domestic affairs. I, for sure, we would all love to see more of that, and I think Canada is extremely well positioned to work on some of these capacity building issues, some of these governance issues, but it's a very, it's a very fine line. Kofi Annan saw the need uh, for uh, going one step uh, beyond R2P, and that is the prevention of mass atrocities and genocide. So he, he, he saw that as uh, the ultimate thing to have to avoid. We, we don't want that to happen again. Uh, and that R2P was a primary tool to that. But uh, interesting, it took time within the UN to have those two uh, to mesh together. And it's only very recently, so it's about seven years after, that we finally see the two of them meshing where you are preventing massive destructions of human beings and that the R2P tool is really the instrument that's, that's a part of that process. Uh, and so uh, the word prevention then comes to the fore. Uh, so does prevention go in front of R2P or is prevention at, as a, at a point where R2P uh, hasn't been able to be functional or being applied? Uh, and so we are still learning this thing. And the most horrific dimension of it is, yeah, it's, it might be, have been abused and maybe that's the Security Council's own fault of not having strategic capabilities of, of following what's going on in the field when they articulate the mandate. If they're inept in being able to monitor and guide uh, the application and implementation of mandates that come out of R2P, then it's not R2P's fault, it's how they actually manage it. And so uh, what we've got to do is, and it was re re recently reinforced in May, is that people want R2P, they're still trying to figure out how really it should be applied. And that's why people in these debates are so critical to its maturing.